Dear comrades and friends, my family and I share with the beloved family, friends, colleagues, and comrades of Rachel Dayan Pascara, our dearest Dara, a deep sense of loss over her passing away. We have all known Dara as a highly intelligent and a beautiful person, inside and out, honest and frank, and never ready to learn not only as an academic but as an activist in the service of the Filipino people and the compatriots she has worked with abroad. It is well known that Dara and I were close friends and cooperators in her academic and activist life. Thus, I have been asked to speak about our working relationship. There are many other people more competent than me in speaking about her work and accomplishments as a student activist in the Philippines and as a passionate fighter for the rights and welfare of compatriots abroad and of the entire Filipino people in the motherland. Despite her academic workload, Dara devoted many years to her work with Kanduan Filipino Consortium and Campaign for Human Rights in the Philippines. She found time for undertaking a relief mission to the Philippines in the wake of the Super Typhoon Yolanda. She was in the delegation to Oslo in 2016 to represent migrant workers during the GRP and DFP peace negotiations. She also undertook solidarity missions to various countries. During the first lockdown in London, she rode her bike to deliver relief packages to compatriots in need. I became friends with Dara together with other UP student activists through Friendster in the first decade of the 21st century. Then we stayed on as friends in Facebook. I admired her for her views on current issues and for her militancy along the line of the Filipino people's struggle for national and social liberation. We did not communicate about her, about her triumphs as a ramp model and as a prospect for Miss Philippines. I read about them from other sources anyway. We became closer friends and sure of ourselves as comrades when she came to visit me in Utrecht in 2008 and stayed at the NDFP office for a whole week. The main purpose of the visit was to review with me the Philippine society and revolution. In our discussions, we covered far more than PSR. We de delved into philosophical and political questions, and I also had the opportunity to learn about her personal life. We spent long hours conversing while sitting down at the office or walking in the Utrecht Centrum. I admire her for overcoming the trauma of her father's tragic death and the low grades she was getting as a result in the University of the Philippines. But she prevailed and graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy with honors. She was determined to stay on in the UK and work as a model in order to pursue her graduate studies. She was successful at being a photographic and ramp model. From then on, I would refer to her as my favorite supermodel. I was delighted when she asked me to endorse her application for admission to the University College of London for a Master of Studies in Philosophy. From then on, I started to call her my favorite philosopher. I call her so even more frequently when she took up her doctoral studies at Birkbeck College. Until she was doing her doctoral dissertation, we often wrote to each other whenever she was confronted with contradictions between certain analytic philosophers and Marxism-Leninism. Whenever she had the chance to visit Utrecht, we had serious and happy moments, like the first time that she came. By serious moments, I mean philosophical and political discussions. By happy moments, I mean exchanging jokes about ourselves, singing karaoke, walking around and visiting tourist spots in Utrecht, Amsterdam, or The Hague, and asking Aldo and other friends to take pictures of us. We could make serious and happy moments. After discussing a philosophical issue for some hours, 
we ended up having a snack outside of the office or simply doing karaoke with other comrades. Dana once called herself a philosophical tomb raider. She loved to visit the tombs of great philosophers to express her respects. It was inevitable for us to visit the tombs of Spinoza and Descartes in the Netherlands. My comradely and intellectual relationship with Dara became most intense when she was rewriting and rewriting her doctoral dissertation on oppression and often consulted me about the contradictions or concurrences between the Marxist and other philosophers. And thereafter, when she was consulting me about prospects of getting teaching appointments or postdoctoral fellowships. She planned to write a whole book titled Philippine Society, Reform or Revolution as a follow-up to PSR. She expected me to cooperate with her in her project, and I readily agreed. Close to the end of her relatively short but fruitful life, she made me happy when she wrote that I would be proud of her for being called an orthodox Marxist by uh, another academic debating with her. With so much pain, I regret that the COVID-19 pandemic prevented her from coming to Utrecht to celebrate with us her getting the PhD diploma. And I regret most that she died young. At the same time, we are consoled and gratified by the fact that she scored highly significant achievements as an academic, activist, and fighter for the national and democratic rights of the Filipino people who are now suffering intolerable exploitation and oppression. All of us who have known Dara love her as much as she loved us. The love that we continue to share with her and among ourselves is imbued with the common cause and love for the Filipino people and the entire humankind who are desirous of liberating themselves from the scourge of monopoly capitalism and all forms of reaction. We must keep alive the memory of Dara by propagating her revolutionary spirit, ideas, and works.